Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Leadership Insights. Today, we're talking to a team from GitLab. GitLab has over 1,200 employees in over 65 countries, and they don't have a single office building. And so they certainly have become, I think, champions of remote working. Joining me to discuss that today is South African engineering manager at GitLab, Jean Duplessis. Jean, thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me, Andy. So before we kick off, Jean, I know that my viewers will be intrigued about the backdrop behind you. Won't you just tell us a little bit about that <laughs> and then something about GitLab as a company as well? Sure. Um, so recently we had, a, uh, we were going to have our annual get together um, in Prague, um, but because of COVID-19, we we had a virtual get together and, um, you know, it's actually a month, I'll move a bit of the way, the montage of, of uh, all the GitLab team members. Um, and it was just kind of like the range in our, in our logo shape. Um, and it's one of those that I really like because it, it, it shows, you know, the breadth of the company uh, and how different we are. Um, so yeah, GitHub, um, you know, in its simplest form, GitHub is a, is, is a, um, a product that uh, teams use to collaborate on software development and project management with. Um, you know, we, we started uh, as, a, as an open source project um, where with, uh, you know, the, the mantra of everybody can contribute. Um, and so, you know, like that's one of our, our kind of like uh, unique things is that um, we have so many contributions to the product um, from the open source community. You know, it's, it's almost like we have two teams working working on, on our product, which is which is really great for us. So yeah, it's a single application that uh, covers all the stages of the software development life cycle, um, you know, all the way from planning to, to um, right, uh, creating code, uh, running your code and deploying it to production. There are people watching today who are not coders, but would be interested in remote working. And given that you are an all remote team in 65 countries, I know that you were onboarding some, some new youngsters today in terms of remote work. What would you say are some of the principles of working remotely? Intentional communication is, is really important. Um, the one thing you don't always get with remote working is, is people's tone, their body language. Um, and so you know, be intentional about your communication. GitLab has created great communication guidelines for, for its team members to follow. Um, we, always, we also have the saying of always have uh, assume positive intent. Um, there's cultural differences in the way people uh, phrase things, um, and so we we encourage using simple language, um, you know, and and being very uh, descriptive and deliberate with with how you communicate. Um, we use Slack internally um, for for uh, communication, um, but uh, we're we're very specific in that we we don't have a we have a ninety day retention policy for communication in Slack because we don't want it to be our single source of truth. You know, GitLab has a has a handbook um, where, which is our single source of truth, uh, where we believe that um, anything that a team member needs to know about how to do something at GitLab should be in there. And so, if they're looking for something, that's where it should be. So, having that uh, retention policy in Slack forces you to make sure that the important information is documented in the in the handbook. And in meetings, um, we use Zoom for meetings, like a lot of companies do. Um, and, and it's a really important part of our strategy to, to have this face-to-face -face, uh, communication. Um, we can't always meet in person, um, but face-to-face -face is, is quite important. Um, but we do Zoom and meetings slightly different. Um, we're very intentional about every meeting, starting on time, ending on time. Um, agendas must be set up beforehand. If there's no agenda, there's no meeting. Um, and um, we also, every meeting has a Google Doc uh, where we take notes uh, at the same time. Uh, team members collaborate taking notes as, as other team members speak and ask questions. Um, and so it allows multitasking um, and collaborating on, on those. And that written copy of transcript of the, of the notes of the doc is really important for team members who, who um, are not available to be on the call. They might be in a time zone where they're sleeping to be able to review what was said afterwards. Um, we also record our meetings so they can they can watch it. But many team members don't have the time to go and watch every meeting, so they they will scan the, the the agenda items and make sure if there was something important, then they, they might go into the meeting. Um, 
We also use uh, speedy meetings. Um, you know, so instead of 30 minutes or, or an hour, it's 25 minutes or 50 minutes. Um, and that just allows you to take some time in between meetings for self-care, answering an email, or mental transition preparing for the next meeting. Um, you know, we, we expect people to be managers of their own time. So uh, even if a meeting is, uh, you know, a company meeting is scheduled, it's your choice whether to attend it. Um, and because we, we record it and we, and we document it, um, you, know, you can always catch up asynchronous. And that's why, how we give people the, the choice of, of whether to join meetings. So they don't get that fatigue um, that a lot of people have talked about uh, being in remote. John, it seems when I look at the playbooks that there's a very strong emphasis on this idea of asynchronous communication and that that would be a critical component of working remotely. Would you just unpack that idea for our viewers? Yeah, so the opposite of asynchronous communication is synchronous. Like now, you, you and I are talking in real time. If we're having a phone call, that's synchronous. If I'm talking to you on Slack directly and you're responding immediately, that's, that's a form of synchronous communication. Uh, one of the, the, the things that, are, that, that uh, new team members find sometimes challenging to adapt to GitLab is the concept of asynchronous communication. It's the, it's the notion of I'm, I'm putting something out there, but I don't expect an immediate answer. Um, it means that um, you know, like I need to be okay with that. And, and the reason for that is um, my team member who I'm asking something from might be in Australia and, and sleeping right now. And so it, it, I can't expect them to be online all the time. And, and so asynchronous communication allows you to, to, to mitigate the challenges that time zones bring, um, because time zones is unfortunately the one thing about remote working that you can't, it's, it's a physical constraint that's there, but it mitigates some of the challenges with that. And it also means that um, even, if, even on Slack, you know, Slack is not seen as a synchronous communication channel at GitLab. Um, I can post a message there, but it doesn't mean I, I have the right to expect an immediate answer. Um, it's up to, to, to the other team member to decide you know, when, they can, when they will answer. They might be in, busy doing some focus work and, and, and don't have the, the, the time or want to focus on what they're doing to respond right now. And, and that is totally okay. So we, we rather focus on um, you know, letting people work on multiple pieces of time, small iterations, and, and with asynchronous communication, it allows us to, to move many parts forward um, you know, at the same time. John, you've referenced the GitLab handbooks or the playbooks. Uh, I had a quick peek uh, last week, and it now runs up, I think if it was printed out, to more than 5,000 pages. What would you say to the critics who are going to look at that and go, wow, I could never work in an organization with so many rules. It seems too prescriptive. It seems a very restrictive working environment. Again, for those not familiar with how you've laid this out as a GitLabber, um, what would you say to that? Well, GitLab, at GitLab, we're very serious about documentation. Um, you know, if you, you know, in an office environment, for instance, you, you've got this notion of uh, perceived context. You know, you, you overhear a conversation, you, you, you see how other people act, and, and so you pick up uh, cues from that. But when you're all remote, you don't have that. So how are you supposed to know what to do if you don't write it down? And, and so, yes, we, we have a very large handbook. Um, we don't expect any employee to sit and read from page one to page five thousand, if you want to call it that. During our onboarding, we we make we we uh, navigate the new starter to very uh, specific pages in the handbook, um, and and it's all about them being aware of where they can find information rather than remembering every piece of information that's out there. Um, we constantly work on making the the, the contribute the, the the ability to contribute content to the handbook easier, um, and and also the ability to search and consume that information. So, um, for instance, we formed a team uh, which I'm actually the manager of that focuses on specifically uh, improving the editing experience for for non-engineering team members of our handbook. So our handbook is a is a static site, which is a, a fancy way of saying. We, we have markdown files, which is in a, a specific format that gets compiled into a static a, a website, a basic HTML page, for instance. Um, so it's not backed by a database or anything like that. Um, but a lot of our non-engineering team members struggle sometimes you know, to, to, to work with that because it requires knowledge about uh, Git and, and markdown. So we, 
GitLab was so dedicated to uh, its handbook that we formed, they formed a team to improve the editing experience of, of static sites. Um, and we're also working on, on improving the usability of it, uh, the discoverability of content, as well as um, you know, the, the, the experience of consuming it. John, I get the impression reading the handbook that it's very much a living document. You make provision for merge requests and for things to be added by people in the team. So how does that work? Yeah. If, I, if I'm in there and I see something that I think might be an addition or an improvement, uh, maybe just give us insight into that process. Yeah, so I'll start by explaining the principle. Um, and I, and I, in in one of the the early meetings that I observed with um, with our CEO, he said, "At GitLab, we either live according to the handbook or we change the handbook." In other words, the handbook is our single source of truth. You know, if if we don't, if our behavior does not correlate with that, we either need to change our behavior or change the handbook to reflect what the right version is. And so any team member can go to the handbook, there's an edit link on it, you click it and you make a change. We also have this principle of, um, you know, change is introduced via a merge request. So you have to go and change the handbook first and then you communicate the change and you, you link to the, the merge request which shows what you've changed. Um, and then it will be socialized and, and discussed and, and if accepted, you know, it gets added to the handbook and that's how change gets introduced. Um, I'll give you a very trivial example. At the at the end of last year, we we have um, we have a, a year end function uh, budget that is allocated to team members. I think it was fifty dollars uh, at, at the time. And what, uh, a team member at GitLab uh, mentioned that they're struggling to find something meaningful to do at fifty dollars, and so they made a, a change, changing it to a hundred dollars. And as a recommendation, they sent that change to to um, to Sid, who, who said, you know, he's happy with it. If the finance director, the finance director looked at it and said, he's happy, and they accepted it, they changed the handbook, and that's how easy it was. Um, so literally, the, the notion of everybody can contribute is not just uh, to GitLab the product, but even team members are empowered to contribute to the handbook and change the process of how we do things. Um, as long as as long as you, um, you follow the approach by, you know, make the change, discuss it, and if there's agreement on it, you know, that's how change happens at GitLab. Jean, here at Leadership Insights, we're always interested to understand the leadership applications of our discussions. What would you say are some leadership lessons for people who are either leading high-performing remote teams or are part of those remote or virtual teams? I think a lot of those principles apply whether you're remote or, or co-located. I think in a remote context, you probably just have to be a little bit more intentional about it. Um, for instance, your values can't be a pretty uh, picture framed and, and uh, hanging on the wall, gathering dust and remote. You know, it's something that you have to live um, and showcase. Um, I said recently posted a photo um, of him playing a computer game. He was taking a break and he posted it as an example to say, you know, please take care of yourself, uh, especially in the, in, the, in the current climate that we have in the world. Um, we are with, with COVID and, and other events. Um, people, people are struggling at times to, to stay focused. And, and so, you know, GitLab has this principle of family and friends first and our, our leaders are leading by example. Uh, when when they encourage employees to take leave to take care of themselves, they first they first take the leave, um, and and sh and then they share it. Like they publicly communicate about it, and they share what they do, um, so that the employees can see. So you really have to be deliberate with with uh, with how you lead um, and leading by example. You can't just talk the talk; you have to walk it. John, you've given us some great examples of principles of working remotely. Some ideas of how to work with a handbook, the written communication, the dynamics of asynchronous communication, and questions around living the brand and living the values. Jean Duplessis, Engineering Manager at GitLab, based in Cape Town, South Africa. Thank you so much for joining me today on Leadership Insights. Thanks, Jean. Thank you, Andy. It was my pleasure.